house of Squibb, manufacturing chemists to the medical profession since 1858, brings you Academy Awards. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for the coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, Today brings you two distinguished stars, Pat O'Brien and Anoff Monju, in the famous story of newspaper life, Front Page, which was nominated as Best Production of the Year for the 1931 Academy Award. Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Monju will play the same roles they created for the screen, and in which Mr. Monju was also nominated as Best Actor of the Year for the 1931 Academy Award. <laughs> This is a story of the fourth estate, which will prove that man didn't know when he was well off and only had three estates. This is the story of a good newspaper man who wanted to get married and go to New York, of his tyrannical and resourceful managing editor who wanted him to stay being a newspaper man, and of other assorted matters pertaining to the case, including a guy who was to get hanged in the morning. Covey. Yeah, boss? Did you find Johnson? No, Mr. Burns, not yet. We've tried all the saloons and other places that you and Mr. Johnson usually go to, but... The word is not go to, it is frequent. We frequent places. Frequently. But, but I... Get Hildy Johnson or else get your laundry out of your desk and get out of the city room. I'll put another man on. In your hat, Duffy. I'm after that bunch of lily-livered, pox-marked, peanut politicians who think they're running this town, and Hildy Johnson's the only man on the staff that I can trust tonight. We've got to have somebody at the hanging and... We've we... got to have Johnson. Hello, Duffy. What? What do you mean he's getting married? Who's getting married? Johnson. Well, he can't do that to me. Where is he? Okay. Where is he? In some church? No, a saloon. Good, good. He's getting up his courage. He's still got a chance. I'll get over there right away. Okay, boss. <laughs> Well, Hildy, so you're leaving me for marriage. Why? None of your business. Well, how did it happen, Hildy? Tell Papa Burns. There was a moon. Oh, I guess that lets me out. Well, I'll give you a farewell party. Thanks, Walter. But it hurts, Hildy. You're not telling a fellow after all I've done for you. Hmm. You mean after all you've done to me? <laughs> oh, you know, Walter, a guy's got to settle down sometime, get a home, wife. That's right, Hildy. I was never big enough to let a nice girl reform me so I could stay in a two-room love nest at nights and walk the floor with a crying kid when the fellows were out having a lot of fun. Marriage does make a respectable citizen out of a man. It must be grand. You never have to worry about a place to go. You always know you're going home. None of this jumping around at all hours, having to be on the inside of all the crazy excitement in this town. The 515 out to some suburb. A home-cooked dinner at exactly 7.30 every night and in bed by 10. Unless after the tapioca, your friends drop in for a neighborly chat. I don't blame you, Hildy. It sounds great. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Waller. I, I just thought of something. Two more, Mr. Burns. Yes, Mike. Fill them up. Well, that fixes Hildy Johnson's wagon, all right. No woman's going to steal the best man I've got. Uh, Mr. Burns. Yes, uh, Mike. Mr. Johnson said to tell you you should put that line on a Victrola record and play it for some country boy. He's getting married. Why, that dirty double-crossing rat! Give me my hat! <laughs> Room, criminal courts building. No, no, Mabel isn't here. Endicott speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Burns. Why, no, no, we haven't seen him. Hiya, slaves. Hiya, Hiya big shot. Just a minute, Mr. Burns. Somebody just came in. 
Hildy. Hey, Hildy Johnson. What? Listen, Hildy, will you do me a personal favor and talk to Waller? He's called up about nine million times. What's the matter, Hildy? You scared of him? I'll talk to that maniac with pleasure. Hello, Mr. Burns. Why, your language is shocking, Mr. Burns. Listen, you crazy baboon. Get a pencil and paper and take this down. Get it straight because it's important. It's the Hildy Johnson curse. The next time I see you, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I'm going to walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese guard. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's telling him. <laughs> I'm sorry, You dirty double-crossing rat, you don't do exactly what <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, Listen, right Listen, uh, Listen Waller. No, I ain't going to cover the hanging. I wouldn't cover Washington Cross in the Delaware if he did it all over again. Never mind the hair oil. Won't do me any good this time because I'm going to New York. Oh, I didn't tell you that, did I? And if you know what's good for you, you'll stay west of Gary, Indiana. Because the Johnsons never forget. And that voice is known as what is telling off the managing editor. Hey, why'd you quit, Hildy? I'm getting married. See these railroad tickets free to New York tonight. Tonight? What do you mean, three? Me and my girl and her darling ma. <laughs> He's in love. Tootsie wootsie. <laughs> uh, does Burns know you're getting married? Does he know? He shook hands like a pal over to throw me a farewell dinner. Oh, that's his favorite joke. Farewell dinner. Sure, he poisons people at him. Oh, hello, honey. Uh, get me Tucker 2164, will you? Yeah, he got me into Polish mics, filled me full of rot gut, trying to bust up my marriage. Oh, hello, Peg. Uh, I know, but I, uh... Oh, you bet I resigned. Yep. On the 1118 tonight. Huh? Uh, oh, the, the press room. I just dropped in to say goodbye, and I'll be... No, not a chance, honey. Got a taxi waiting. Ten minutes. All right. See you guys in a few minutes. I gotta make the rounds and say my farewell. Well, there goes a good guy straight to... Well, anyway, I hear he's got a contract with an advertising agency. What doing, writing poems about ladies' girdles? Who dumped this out of the window on me just now? Oh. We promise not to tell. Ah, Sheriff, it's only a spittoon. It was Hildy Johnson, wasn't it? All right, I got a good notion to take this press room away from you. That would be a break. Place is so full of cockroaches now, you can't walk. Personally, I don't give a hoot. But how does it look when there's somebody in the death house? How do you suppose he feels listening to all this revelry? Well, that's your care, Sheriff, how he feels. We're doing everything we can to... To get your whole ticket re-elected next week. Well, when Earl Williams drops through that trap tomorrow, it's a million votes. Can we help it if the people rise to support this administration's stand against corruption? Personified by Mr. Earl Williams? Uh, a guy who loses a job he's held for 14 years. Joins a parade of the unemployed. Because he's goofy from lack of food, waves a red undershirt. Williams is a dangerous radical. And he killed a policeman. Now, wait a minute. Once and for all, Sheriff, will you hang this guy at 5 a.m. instead of 7? It won't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Oh, now, Roy, you can't hang a fellow in his sleep just to please a newspaper. No, 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 but you can keep postponing a hanging so it'll come just before the election. With this new alien is coming in, how do we know there'll be a hanging? Yeah. What if the professor finds he's insane or something? He won't find he's insane because he ain't. He's as sane as I am. Saner. Now, here's a resume of the situation. The newspapers have got to put their shoulders to the wheel. Impress on the radicals that a death warrant for Earl Williams is a death warrant for every bomb-throwing foreigner in this town. Hello, give me the desk. Hey, get this. The sheriff just put 200 more relatives on the payroll to protect the city against the redcoats. Raise my bed a damn. Okay, baby, give me the desk. Hello. The sheriff just received four more letters threatening his life, which he is going to answer by a series of raids. And to prove it's on the square, he's going to write himself four more letters threatening his life. Yeah, I know he wrote them on account of the misspelling. Desk, please. This is McHugh, Joe. More on the Williams hanging. You ready? The condemned man ate a hearty dinner. Mock turtle soup, chicken pot pie, hash brown potatoes, combination salad, and pie a la mode. Yeah, baby, you better get the rest of this. The condemned man ate a hearty dinner, as follows. Noodle soup, roast beef, sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce, big hunk of pastrami. Yeah, and make mine the same. Come on, come on, who opened it? I did. Shut up and give out the cards. How many? Five. Well, all set to go, boys. Except to say goodbye to you, bums. I got a dumb brother who went into the advertising business, Hildy. He's got seven kids, belongs to a country club. He gets worse every year, just a fathead. Yeah? 
Listen, if you want to know something, you'll all end up in the copy desk, gray-headed, humpback, slobs, dodging guarantees when you're 90. Yeah, and you'll be out in the street the minute your contract's up. Not me. My girl's uncle owns the business. Has he got a lot of jack? It's choking him. Look, he gave us 500 in cash for a wedding present. There it is, less than what it costs to get the tickets to New York. I still say you'll rot in that overstuffed palace of blurbs that you're going to. Why, I... Here, what goes on? William broke out of the death house. Here, let me get that phone. Hurry up, sister. This is important. Hello, Jimmy Rollins. Come, Come on, on, give me the death phone. Oh, oh, I might have known buying them tickets was bad luck. Hello. Hello, Morning Post. Give me Walter Burns. Burns, as an S-T-I-N-K. Walter, Billy Johnson, Earl Williams just landed out of the death house at the county jail. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, Walter, I'm on the job. Yeah, yeah, call you back. Give me Walter Burns. Walter, listen. I got the whole thing. Got it from Jacoby. Sure, it's exclusive. It's a pip. Only get this. It cost me 260 bucks to bribe the guy. The dough my girl gave me to get us to New York. Okay, all right, all right. But don't forget to send that dough. Look, this is the jailbreak of your dreams. This profound thinker, the alienist they hired to examine Williams. Yeah, yeah, the one from Vienna. Yeah, well, he decided to make Williams reenact the crime. Shut up and listen. He had to have a gun to reenact it with. And who do you suppose supplied the gun? The sheriff... The sheriff gave his gun to the professor. The professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor right in the stomach. The professor's in the hospital. Williams has evaporated, and the sheriff's gone nuts. Ain't it perfect? Hold the phone while I'm not finished yet. Send that door over right now. I just did this as a personal favor. I'm leaving town. No, don't. I don't get married. Tell the guy to hurry with it. I'll wait here. Oh, hello, Peggy. And what was that? Well, nothing. I was just telling Burns I was through, that's all. Hello, darling. Oh, now, Hildy. You haven't done something foolish with our money. No, no. Then I think I'd better take care of it from now on. Now, sweetheart, it's going to be perfectly all right. Oh, then you haven't got it. Uh, no, no, not this minute, but he's sending it right over. Walter, I mean. It'll be here any minute. Walter? Oh, Hildy, that man makes you do everything he wants. You're just a string around his finger. Oh, baby, listen. I, I was just here by accident and something happened. I, I had to use some of our money to get information. Now, I'll get it back. Look, Hildy, Mother's downstairs in a taxi cab. I'm just ashamed to face her. If she knew about that money, well, it's all we've got in the world, Hildy. We haven't even got a place to sleep except the train. Well, I'll tell you what. You and Mother go to the station and, and get the baggage checked. Here's the tickets. You mean you're not coming? Oh, of course I'm coming. I'll meet you both at the information booth. Oh, draw that Walter Burns. You simply can't resist him. Come on, Hildy. Tip on Williams' hideout. We go with the riot squad. Well, okay. Wait, wait. Oh, you're not going with them. Oh, Peggy, wait for me at the information booth. Oh, we'll watch downstairs first. You see, you don't go anywhere with the riot okay, squad. Okay, baby. I'll just finish up here for a few minutes and meet you under the clock. All right, Hildy. But if you don't come, I'll never trust you again. So there. Oh, I have to get married on a day like this. Is this the press room? I'm looking for the sheriff. I'm the sheriff. You're certainly a hard fellow to find. Well, what do you want? I'm the mayor. Well, I'm Pincus, a messenger from the state house. This is from the governor. What's from the governor? The reprieve for Earl Williams. For who? Wait a minute. Who else knows about this? Well, they were all standing around when he wrote it. It was after they got back from fishing. Get the governor on the phone. They ain't got a phone. They're duck shooting now. Oh, a lot of blasted Nimrod. Pure politics. We've got to think fast before those lying reporters get hold of this. What will we tell them? Tell them the party is through in this state on account of you. Here, you. What's your name? Pincus. You never arrived with this, whatever it is. Get that? Yes, I did. How much do you make a week? Forty dollars. How would you like a job for three hundred and fifty dollars a month? Me? All you have to do is to lay low and keep your mouth shut. Here, go to this address. It's a nice, homey little place. Tell her, tell her Fred sent you. Listen, Burns. I'm waiting here. Where's the guy with my dough? If you try to double-cross me, I'll... I'll... Holy mackerel, I'm seeing ghosts. Earl Williams just crawled through the window. Hang up. 
Hang up. I'll call you right back. Williams, I saw you when that searchlight went past the window. Drop that gun. It ain't loaded. I fired all the bullets already. I surrender. I couldn't hang onto that roof any longer. You know, I, I'm not afraid to die. I was telling the fellow that when he handed me the gun. Shut up a second while I lock that door. Waking me up in the middle of the night. Talking to me about things they don't understand. Calling me a radical. I'm an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got nothing to do with bombs. It's the philosophy that guarantees every man freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. All those poor people being crushed by the system. All those boys that was killed in the war and in, in the slums. All of those slaves to a crust of bread. I can hear them crying. Well, shut up, will you? Go on. Take me back. Hang me. I done my best. Hildy! Hildy! I know you're in there. Mama says she's tired of waiting. No. Shut up! No, not you, Peggy. Get me the managing editor. Get me Waller Burns, but quick. Hildy! Mama wants you to come right down this minute. Oh, Peggy, for... Oh, Waller. Something big has happened. I captured her Williams in the press room. Get over here right away! <laughs> In just a moment, you will hear the second part of Academy Award. When you ask for a tube of squib dental cream, you're really asking for a tube of pure refreshment. There's refreshment in the flavor of squib dental cream. It's so cool and tangy, like the taste of tender green mint. There's refreshment in the brisk action of the squib dental cream. It wakes up your mouth, leaves teeth and gums feeling delightfully clean. But that isn't all. You can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference when you use Squib Dental Cream. It helps to bring out the natural sparkle of your smile because the special polishing agent in this quality dentifrice is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science. In every way, Squib Dental Cream lives up to the famous standard of perfection that distinguishes all the great family of Squib products. Try Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Before we bring you part two of Front Page, we want to thank the writers of this picture, Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur, for making the story available. And now the House of Squib presents part two of Academy Award, starring Pat O'Brien and Adolph Monjou in Front Page. <laughs> All right, Hildy. Where's Earl Williams? You bring my money. You'll get your money. Where is he? In that desk. Let me out. I can't stand it. Shut up. You're sitting pretty. For the love of Mike, mother. What's the matter here? Oh, gee. It's my girl's mother. What are you doing? Shut up. I won't shut up. You're doing something wrong. What's in there? Oh, Louie. Louie, come in here. Yeah, boss. Take this um, lady over to Black Mike's and lock her up. See that she doesn't talk to anyone on the way. What, what's that? Okay. Oh, Waller, you can't do that. Tell him it's a case of delirium treatment. Listen, Waller, this will get me in a terrific jam. Don't worry, Mother, this is only temporary. Hey, where do you think you're going? Let go of me. I got to get my girl. Your girl? Why, in time of war, you could be shot for what you're trying to do. Oh, nuts! There's your story in that desk. Story? We got the city hall where we want them. We're going to crucify those jerks. We'll keep Williams undercover until morning so the morning post can break the story exclusively. And we'll let the governor in on the capture. He can share the glory. Why, you sap, they'll be naming streets after you over this. Yeah, yeah, but we can't leave Williams here. No, we'll get the boys to move him in that desk over to our office. Get that typewriter, huh? Start pounding out a lead. Come on, snap into it. How much do you want on it, Waller? Hello, this is Burns. Put Duffy on. Snap into it. What? Hildy, give me all the words you got. Hello, Duffy. I want ten huskies over here at the press room right away. Now listen, Duffy. I want you to tear out the whole front page. That's what I said. The whole front page out. Hildy Johnson's writing the lead. 
Tildy. What the devil do you want? Tildy. What? You can't come in here, miss. Get out. Listen, darling. Where's mother? I don't care if there's a million dead, Dovey. Make room for this story. Peggy, I gotta ask you to do something. A big favor. You're not coming. They call those Miss America pictures off page six. Hold it, Dovey. You're doing this to him. He was going and you stopped him. Get out of here. Peggy, I can explain. You'll keep your mouth shut. Hello, Dovey. What? I don't care. Jump to Louis Kahn controversy. Fake it. Peggy, you're marrying a newspaper man, not a junk-headed fancy boy. Oh, you never did love me, or you couldn't talk to me that way. I can't stand it in here. I'm smothering to death. Get back in there, you mock turtle. Not you, Duffy. Put butch on. Oh, this is the end. I don't give a... Don't leave me, Peggy. Keep it coming, Hildy boy. Get the story out. Hello, butch. Never mind the addition for the mail train. Hold it up. Stop the presses. Listen, you're not working for the advertising department. Keep on this wire. Boss, boss, we hit a patrol wagon. It was on the wrong side of the street. Where's mother? I should know. She beat it someplace, I guess, or they took it to the morgue. You moron. Didn't you even lock her up someplace? I couldn't, boss. I told you we hit a patsy wagon, and I'm that way with the cops just now. Oh, she's dead, dead. That finishes me. I killed her. I let you send her away. Now, how can I face Peggy? If it was my own mother, I'd carry on for the paper. You better get me out of this desk. I'm choking. Shut up, you. It's better than hanging. Tell you, I'll shut up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Wise guys. Thought you were going to get away with something, didn't you? We yeah. know you got Williams. Yeah, where are you hiding them, you double-crossing heel? Let go of me. My mother is dead. Who do you think you are busting in here like you this? You can't bluff me, Burns. I don't care who you are or what paper you're editor of. Let go of me, Sheriff, or... Let me I... go! Let go of me, you punks! Hey, he's got a gun. Give me that. I got a right to carry a gun if I want it. Not this gun. This happens to be the gun that Earl Williams shot his way out with. You're under arrest, Johnson. You too, Burns. Who's under arrest, you pinhead? Do you realize what you're doing? Yep. Send for the mayor, boys. I won't make up with him, Mother. Who did it, madam? That man there, officer. Mother, I all right, Mother. What's the idea? What are you cops doing in here? This dame says she was kidnapped. That man was in charge of everything. He told them to kidnap me. Are you referring to me, madam? Ah, kidnapping, eh? And I'll tell you something more. I'll tell you why they did it. Please, Mother! Come on, Hildy, we gotta get bail. I was in here, and they had some kind of a murderer. They were hiding him. They were what? Mother, shut up! Madam... You're a cock-eyed liar. Don't shoot. I'm smothered. I give up. Let me out. Uh Aha, harboring a fugitive from justice. That's him. That's the one they were hiding. Oh, you gray-haired old Judas. Ah, so you got him, eh, Sheriff? Good work. Good work. Yep, Mayor, there they are. Look kind of natural, don't they, with those handcuffs on? (laughs) Sheriff, you're going to wish you'd never been born. (laughs) A sight for sore eyes. Well, it looks like you boys bit off more than you can chew. Yep, looks like about ten years apiece for them. Now, go suck your fat head. These guys are going to be in office about two days more. Then we're pulling their noses out of the feed bag. I sent for the district attorney. You know what you smart boys will be doing? Making brooms at the state pen. I want a lawyer. I got a right to have a lawyer. Hildy, call my lawyer. No lawyers are going to be able to help you, Burns. This is the morning post you're talking to. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, the power of the press. <laughs> Sheriff in here? Yeah, the ugly one. That's your man. Here's your reprieve, Sheriff. Get out of here! You, you can't bribe me. What's this? Get out of here, you! I won't. Here's your reprieve. What? I won't take their graft or their bribes. I'm a family man. Who was bribing you? They were. They wouldn't take the governor's reprieve for Williams. This is a frame-up! Oh, murder, huh? You are going to murder Williams. Oh, oh. Mr. Pincus, you are a sturdy character, a really great man. Now, just step right over to this phone and dictate your true story of how the mayor and the sheriff defied an order of the governor of this state and were going to go ahead and hang a man that had been reprieved just so they could make a little character before an election. Step right over here, Mr. Pincus. Now, wait. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Maybe we've been too hasty. Let's talk this thing over. Take their handcuffs off, you blundering idiots. Yes, sir. Right over this way, Mr. Pincus. If you're going to print my story in the paper, maybe you'd like this picture of my wife. Why, Mr. Pincus, how thoughtful of you. A very, very handsome woman. Thank you. Hildy, get on that phone. Hello, Duffy. Listen. Tear out that whole front page. Yeah, tear it out again. Oh, 
Hildy. Are we really going to New York this time? You know we are, darling. Why, I wouldn't let him stay. Go on, Hildy, before I make you city editor. Hurry up, Peggy. Better get that train. He means it. Any objections to my kissing the bride? No. Go ahead. Kiss the guy, Mrs. Johnson. I wish there was time to get you a little wedding present, but wait a minute. This watch of mine. Oh, no, Walter. You make me feel like the bride. Ah, shut up. It was a present from the big boss himself. If you look inside, you'll find a little inscription. To the best newspaper man I know. When you get to New York, Hildy, you can scratch out my name and put yours in its place. If you want to. Oh, you know I wouldn't do that. Oh, go on, Hildy. If Mr. Burns wants you to, you don't want to hurt his feelings. Well... This is the first and last thing I ever got from the newspaper. Well, goodbye, Mr. Burns. You know, I always had a queer opinion of you, Mr. Burns. I still think you're a little peculiar, and so does Mother. But you're all right. Uh, underneath, I mean. I think you're a peach. So are you. You look just like a little flower. Goodbye, you big baboon. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Duffy. What's the first stop of the 1240 to New York? That's right. I want you to send a wire to the chief of police. Tell him to meet that train and arrest Hildy Johnson and bring him back here. Wire him a full description. The dirty bum stole my watch. Only a little more than a generation ago, druggists had to compound many doctors' prescriptions from natural products purchased in such crude forms as roots, bark, leaves, and seeds. There was no other way. But today, your pharmacist starts his work with drugs which have already been scientifically purified and refined for him. First to produce many such drugs, the House of Squibb has played a vital part in the swift development of the profession of pharmacy. And so today, the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of many prescribed medicines can be traced to the uniformity, purity, and efficacy of the squib products used in their making. Your pharmacist, like your doctor, knows from daily experience how much squib standards of quality mean to the cause of human health. He knows that every product bearing the squib name is the result of a quest for perfection that never ceases. That's why squib is a name you can trust. Next week, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Awards starring Frederick Marsh in A Star is Born. Today's performance of Front Page was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Pat O'Brien, whose performance you enjoy today as Hildy Johnson, is soon to be seen in RKO's production, Crack Up. Adolph Manjou, who played the part of Walter Burns, may currently be seen in Sam Wood's RKO production, Heartbeat. This is Hugh Grundy bidding you good night until next week at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Awards, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust.